Um, okay. So you guys have played what twenty eight hundred hands, and yeah. you're up. How much is this? So without well, the rake. So it says here nineteen hundred, and then plus nine hundred dollars plus three hundred and rake. Sorry, nine hundred big blinds. Um, and three hundred dollars in rake is an extra one hundred big blinds. So you're up well, like twenty. Like blinds, twenty twenty one blinds. blinds. Yeah, is, is is this all the hands that you did you did you manage to get no, the correction? Uh, we're still missing some, but according to my transaction history uh, on black chip, I think it's probably we're probably missing like fifty big blinds, so it's probably closer to twenty one. Okay. All right. Um. So last night I studied. I studied the limp pots. I studied the limp ISO pots, and I studied uh, the the new preflop stuff. Um, I wasn't able to memorize all of it, but I was able to memorize some of the hands with a, a pure action, like a pure raise or a pure limp. And there's a lot more hands that that never limp in the newer sims I found. So yeah, yeah. As the the, the further we the further we start moving away from GTO, the the more pure actions you'll end up taking. Um, okay. So your strategy will actually become easier to memorize. Um, so the more information that we get on Brown, the more pure actions will end up happening. So that's um, just part of the course. We'll Solid. be doing we'll be doing a lot more of that. Um, I'm running. Well, I have one almost completed here. Uh, we'll call this version four with the exploit um so use your using a, an exploit open um you're liking the three sizes have you been using the slightly bigger size more frequently yes you, sh you should have um, increased the frequency slightly yeah, I I put some work into so the way I study it is I essentially have oh, I'll bring it up should be small blind VO three so I write it all down in my it looks like a Kindle but it's called a Remarkable and it's like a paper tablet and basically look at it like this. And I try to, I basically do the same thing over and over again, where I try to remember what all the hands are doing and fill in the frequencies on the matrix. And this is what I had last night. And so you can see the, the single digit numbers are hands that only raise. And then uh, the Cs are for call, FR for fold. Um, and trying to remember, I was trying to remember today which hands had pure frequencies and because because I couldn't just memorize the entire hand matrix in a day um I tried to memorize the um the the hands with a pure action so there was a lot more 2.2.7 xing uh today um and that was a result of me implementing the new strategy only for the hands that had a pure action excellent excellent okay and how did you feel with the with the with the new pre strategy, it should be. I mean, obviously, it's working pretty well because you're running hot. But how how did you feel that it went? How, how did you um, feel like he was responding to it? It, I I had like a very slight feeling that he might be a bit nitty against the two point seven x, but it, it I didn't really have that much data on it. Uh, I think I will say, um, pre flop aside, I think he played. There were some spots post flop where I think he played very poorly today, especially. I don't know what happened. I hadn't noticed anything like that before, but like there were some spots today where I'm just like, he showed up with hands that like are just like you should never show up with. I think there was one hand in particular. He three bet me pre flop um, with five three suited, which first off doesn't three bet very often. It's probably fine. Uh, at a low frequency, but you kind of need the board coverage on the 5-3 straight boards because Imposition has 5-3 offsuit and they're going to be pretty aggressive um, in SRPs where 5-3 makes the nuts. 
Um, but he did three bet it. And then he like bet two thirds on King Jack 10 rainbow with five, three suited. He had a backdoor flush on. That was it. And I called with nine, seven, um, board ran out of straight. It was like a really bad run out. It was like a uh, queen on the turn. So the four straight, uh, check, check. And then the river was a nine. Um, and he bet like one third and then I called to a chop. I, I RNG raises though. Um, but yeah, it was, it was there. Like, there's no way five, three of nothing can, can like two thirds on a board. That's not, it's not like a super good board for him. Like, yeah, he's got a lot of ace queen, but like, so do I as the caller, as the imposition caller. And then I also have like a bunch of all suit two pairs. He doesn't have, he can't just range bet and, and five, three is like the worst hand in his range. Like I can't think of a worse hand than five, three. Like, like everything else is not terrible. The five, three is, um, I think he was losing the thread a little bit there. Uh, I think he was getting like really tilted. That, that was my yeah. inclination. That was my feeling, uh, during the match. All right. He's like trying to force stuff. I think, I right. think he's at the point where he like in his brain, he's like kind of stressing out and he just wants to get all the money back very quickly. So he's, he's like, he's putting in a lot of money into the pot with hands and at times where he shouldn't yeah yeah exactly you should just um let him give you the money essentially so sort of sit back a little bit don't play into whatever mind games he's trying to he's trying to play mm -hmm. and just play solid and and he'll end up just giving you the money this is this is kind of what happens when you when you honestly this is this is what happens when you when when I play like six max at bloody Chandra and on stream, like a lot of it is just sitting back playing solid and people just spew into you. So mm -hmm. if he's tilted, this has got this is where his play is going to lead towards. He'll just end up um spewing into you unnecessarily, uh, you know, to try to bluff you off crap. Um and you just sit there with your RNG. If your RNG says follow, you follow. If your RNG says call, you call. And he'll keep tilting himself because he'll not realize that you're not making all of your decisions by yourself. You're using an RNG to help you remain balanced. Um, and yeah. then overall, you'll you'll end up continuing uh, to win, uh, which is good. Uh, look, at, at, at this stage, it's going to be keeping your own head level even though you're ahead, you're ahead in the challenge, but you need to maintain focus. Um, you've got one day of play left this week. So maintain focus. We went to the weekend, um, probably discuss some things in terms of a Zenith deal to um, patch you through all the way to the end. Um, and then just r remaining focused because the, if, if you let sort of your um, advantage get to your head, you'll end up losing the advantage, right? Mm -hmm. So the trick is you just not lose the advantage. Even if from now to the end of the challenge, you make zero money, you win the challenge, right? And you win, you know, the, the, the 20 binds. So it's not necessarily about winning the maximum at this stage of the challenge because you're ahead, it's about making sure that you don't put yourself in a, in a mind space where you start losing unnecessarily. Obviously there's going to be a significant amount of variance between now and the end of the challenge because I've only played like 10% of the hands. So, mm -hmm. and you, you've already seen, you know, this is a very high variance game heads up. So between now and the end of the challenge, there will be swings, potentially another swing like the one that you're going now, except in the opposite direction. So, what I'm saying is between now and the end of the challenge, it could be this is happening to you rather than to Brown. All right. Mm -hmm. So you need to keep your head level and try to maintain your composure while you're ahead. And so you can get more ahead so that when in the future, the swing is happening the other way, it's a bit easier because you're coming from very winning down to less winning rather than trying to dig yourself out of a hole, which is, um, mentally a lot more difficult and so you need to maintain good focus all the way through and it's a 10 weeks thing so this is going to be a marathon and if brown mm -hmm. is treating this as a sprint he's going to burn out right so yeah. you need to 
keep keep focused keep working on your game keep working on trying to optimize your sleep your exercise your diet all of these things together will keep you at optimal function so with that how did you sleep last night how, how have you been going with exercise um still exercising every day uh had a really good workout yesterday and today uh sleeping is very good um i did wake up a bit early but i was able to get back to sleep and, and get the full amount of rest i needed uh woke up today felt really good and um played poker and felt pretty mentally in the zone uh when i was playing poker today so things are yeah, things are going that's, well on the bonus front that's 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 what we want right we want you to be in the zone while you're playing right mm -hmm. that like this this five hour block in the day where you're playing we want you to have like optimal brain function and so we're gonna be um constructing the rest of your day around this five hour block okay and so like mm -hmm. while you're doing this challenge right you might get invited out by friends or family blah 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 if you do that try to limit the amount of alcohol that you that you drink try to limit the amount uh, of time that you stay out late right i know those things are going to happen on the weekend and you won't be playing on the weekend so it's still fine to go and do those things but if you you know do anything to excess you'll end up setting yourself behind by essentially a week because your body will take a significant amount of time to to regain its composure to get yourself into that um, brain space again so i want to get you, you to get into the optimal um optimal brain function during this time while you're playing and that would mean avoiding alcohol and avoiding late nights on the weekends while you're playing this challenge mm -hmm. after you win like uh, 10 weeks after you like at the end of the 10 weeks or how long it's going to take and you win go ahead go ahead and party your, your ass off <laughs> yeah. all right Can but between live? now and then <laughs> don't yeah mm -hmm. absolutely okay um I'll share my screen. Um, I ran this simulation last night. The simulation was based on some of the statistics uh, from before today. With uh, so this is your this is a small blind open simulation. It's got uh, the three sizes. Here I locked it into thirty four percent on the ISO, um, eighteen point uh, six eighteen point five percent on the three bird versus your small size. And then 16.5% onto your large size. And I've also locked his uh, calling frequencies close to what he has been doing. So um, he's been slightly overfolding um, when you open. Mm -hmm. And so your open size uh, is going to be a little bit, uh, it's going to have a little bit more, more, more trashy hands in it. So some of these, um, some of these hands that might've always been a limb, like the 10, 4, 10, 3, Maybe you can chuck them into the small size at, at, at some frequency, but a lot of these suited hands go into the suited trash hands go into the big size. Um, mm -hmm. the, the limping range is uh, significantly uh, uh, more polar as a result. Um, because wait, 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 can you go back to the limping range? Yeah, so it's a little bit different. There's a lot more. There's a lot more. There's a lot. There's a lot fewer like um, mixed limps now. So like a lot of these suit hands aren't limping, a lot of these um, offsuit hands, this block of offsuit hands isn't limping. And then like, sure, the limping range is still like focused on these sort of weak offsuit hands, right? That's a big chunk of it. And some of these mm -hmm. suited hands. Um, so I'll, I'll full screen it for you. So these offsuit has hands the... and some of these, yeah. Uh, has the um, limp, limp re-raise frequency increased as well? Because it looks yes. like there's a lot more trapping. Yes. There is significantly more trapping, and so your limp re-raise frequency has increased to almost eleven percent. Oh wow! Um, so there's there's significantly more more trapping, and the reason why this is the case is because he's uh, slightly under throw bending you, and slightly mm -hmm. overfolding against your open, and so as a result, uh, your strong hands um, will want to, you know, go into the limp size to take the line, which can win the more money pre-flop. Um, he has been isolating your limp uh, fairly 
aggressively. So I think um especially today it felt like he was isoing my limbs at a at a much higher frequency than previous times. Yeah. Here we're at 36.21. Um and I put it at 34.5. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh yeah. That being said, like, yeah, you need to probably limit raise a little bit more um against his particular uh strategy. So against his particular strategy, like he's over raising your your limp by a little bit and then mm -hmm. he's under raising your big size um so as a result you should uh essentially allocate more strong hands into uh your big size sorry your your limp and more weak hands into your big size um because they will get to realize more so you can see he has his three bit frequency against your big sizes drop down significantly so about fifteen percent. I ran this. It should be like seventeen. Yeah, it should be. It should be seventeen and a half. Okay. If he's um, if he's playing close optimal within within the sizes that he has, um, so we know he's not doing that. Um, so either that means that he hasn't run any of these sims himself. Um, or he's always running sims that are vastly off. I, either way, it essentially means that he doesn't really know what he's doing against this particular preflop strategy maybe he hasn't played against anyone before with a mixed preflop strategy right probably not um i've and... played a good deal of heads up and i've never played anyone who plays like me like i'm playing now <laughs> yeah yeah um pe people people don't do that because they're too focused on post slot and um mm -hmm. as a result they miss these sorts of opportunities um and if you play like uh, a lot of hands, like you'll you'll see you'll see the reason why, like you'll begin to feel the reason why the splits mat matter, right? Begin to feel the reason mm -hmm. why the splits make sense, right? You're putting, you know, even though you know sometimes you have to fold it, you're putting one big blind in less with some of these hands that just want to like see a flopping position, um, by 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 limping rather than raising, um, and then. And then you also, um, basically, it ends up meaning that you you end up putting in less money with weak hands and more money with strong hands is 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 the trick. And you do that starting pre flop, and that magnifies itself across um, the flop turn and river. Um, so I will uh, send you this uh, flop sim that you can take a look at. Um, so it's just going to, so the, the preflop sims you can take a look at, so you can just, um, uh, take a look at some of the responses. It's going to mean you're going to be four betting, um, significant, significantly, uh, less after you go for, um, your big open any three bets you, um, probably as, as you should. Um, and then you're going to be, uh, three betting his ISO single in more, so closer to 11%. Um, okay. So, yeah, and uh, then there is also his. I, will I be overfolding to three bets when I open to two point seven? Uh, yeah, we can't necessarily say that, um, because we don't know if his three bet is balanced or not. Uh, in 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 the in the sense of whether it's not whether it's got a sufficient amount of value and bluffs. Um, hold, up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Given that we saw him show up in a three bet pot with a seven suited, which every sim I've seen has a seven basically pure calling pre, except for some like very high rake sims. And he also showed up with like five three suited, which shouldn't three bet very much. Um, I think it might be safe to say he, like, I've, I've yet to see a, a three bet pot showdown where he has queen eight offsuit. Like that, that should be like a fairly large component of your three bet range because there's a lot of like, like you're three betting them like 30% of the time, but they're offsuit. So there's like 12 combos of them. So it's like you have, you're supposed to have like quite a bit there. And the fact that he's never shown it down is could point to an unbalanced three bet range, I think. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, the, the trick there is to figure out exactly 
in what way it's unbalanced. He could be using some really dodgy pre-flop simulations. Um, I can probably try to run some dodgy pre-flop simulations and just to get an estimate of what the ranges might look like and then try to run exploit exploits against those ranges. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's wait but, for the weekend. Uh, yeah, to do that. I'll probably I'll probably need the weekend to figure that out. In, in in the meantime, I'll just give you this one. This will just be an exploit against the frequencies that he's shown us um, up Great. until now. Obviously, it could be related to the card distribution as well. Like it could just mm -hmm. be being dealt significantly fewer, you know, tens plus ace king cut type hands. Um, yeah, which is another possibility, which is uh, going to impact things a bit so um that being said take take a look at it uh have it potentially uh impact the way that uh you're thinking and uh maybe you can try to think about whether or not you want to Im implement some of these uh exploit sims um so up, up up until now giving you a bunch of sort of gto stuff or like really light exploits against you know uh 80 85 percent open frequency which we we know is using and like it's going to be very unlikely that um any kind of card distribution effects are going to cause him to have uh, a percentage open frequency that's a little bit different from that um because him opening your cards are particularly your cards are essentially random, so there's no impact from your hands on his distribution of of opening hands. So, like we know yeah. with essential certainty that he um, has been opening, you know, close to eighty five percent. So, uh, the uh, exploit sim that I ran, where he's opening eighty four percent, is going to be uh, a decent a decent way to to use it. Um, yeah, a eighty four percent here. So, somewhere in between. Um, what was still, yeah, could be. It's probably following a little bit too much when you, when you open. Um. So yeah, you can take a look at this. Um, and you might be surprised. I mean, you you're already playing like ninety five percent hands. Uh, so. You just be sort of mixing some of those around. Um yeah, you're like you're really only not only not playing one, two, three, four, five, six types of hands. Um seems pretty wild, but the fact is this is the kind of stuff that you can get away with when um you're opening mix and he's playing pure against you or single size against you. Like there's just not a lot he can really do to punish any of this um like in order for him to really punish your limps like he would need more sizes against your against your limp but he doesn't have that so uh yeah keep limping um now so this is going to mean that you'll be uh limping a little bit less and trapping a little bit more when you limp and then opening a little bit more um yeah, i noticed big um size. I noticed in the preflop sims, uh, the version three small blind preflop strategy, uh, I think it's because because there's like a whole range of hands in like the middle of the offsuits that never limp. And I mean, like that is because they would be indifferent against the 5x ISO, correct? Yes. Okay, cool. So you're you're literally avoiding the the spots which make that particular hand indifferent um, mm -hmm. against his pure strategy. Right. Which is which is the point. If if he had a mixed strategy, you wouldn't be able to do this. Like you wouldn't be able to never have these hands in there. Um, but because he's only choosing this one size, you know exactly which hands will be indifferent. And so you avoid putting those hands in the limp. Similarly for the three bet as well. Um, you're actively avoiding putting certain, making certain hands, you, you know, certain of your own hands indifferent, and so certain hands will end up being clear folds and clear continues, rather than having a lot of indifference. Um, so, yeah, the solver will will try to figure this out 
for us and do its best job at, at figuring it out. And obviously there's going to be still some hands that are indifferent, but the solver will end up avoiding the vast majority of hands that are indifferent against this um, pure strategy that he's implementing. Um, and it's assuming that he's implementing it in a balanced way, which definitely could not be. So we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll take a deeper dive over the weekend and potentially run some more exploit sims against different types of three bit ranges to see if anything else uh, pops up. Uh, but this version four of the exploits is probably going to be um, pretty good. So I'll send it to you. Um, now let's take a look at how you're doing. I mean, if you're following, uh, if you've memorized the charts and been following it pretty well, then you should be doing okay. So your limp three bet's gone down a little bit, which is good because you were limp three betting a bit much. Um, sorry, wrong one. Yeah. Um, your three bet preflop has dropped a touch, which is fine. We did say that you were three betting a little bit too much, but probably um, this could be distribution, but you might want to double check the three bet ranges a bit more. Um, four bet frequency has remained the same. Yeah, so probably want to drop that a little bit. Um, especially, I mean, it definitely could be distribution, right? Because you're running so well. Um, so I wouldn't like go out of out of out of my own way to reduce that. Call and fold and raise. Fold is a touch high. It should be closer to the sort of sixty-ish percent. Um. Yeah, this is a new one where limp limp fold is going to be slightly less because he's uh, raising too often. Um. But it's fine nevertheless. The limp raise is nine point zero three. This is probably okay. Maybe you just work on it, especially like over the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. Work on this new, new, new lot of exploits so you can sort of memorize it. You'll be doing pretty well. And then let's have a look at the flop. How are you playing on the flop? A three bit of 2%. Okay, good. So your bet flop in the limp pot is, is dropped, which is good. So you're toning that down a bit. Yeah. Quite um, bad. excellent. Uh, call flop two bet. That's fine. Let's see that is there a pot. Yeah, this is probably okay since you just like range bets one third or something. Um. Yeah, like if your range bet's one third, then your flop super frequency against the bet should be 70 to 75 percent. So it could be potentially that you're floating a bit wide. Um, it's different if it's one quarter, then that's sort of okay. Mm -hmm. Um, in the three bit pot, was he going? He, he was going like 30 30 percent, right? but it's mostly one third. I mostly don't see him, yeah. I don't that's, see him. That's that's fine. This is. I mean, there were there were some flop over bets, I think, uh, but yeah, in in general, um, I've also been running hot in the uh, in the three bet pots. So yeah, that 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 that'll, that'll, that'll explain that'll explain the increased calling frequency as well. Mm -hmm. Um, like it's it's difficult because it's not a huge amount of hands, and like you're running so hot. So I'm not going to like say that anything that you're doing is going to be too out of the ordinary. Um, mm -hmm. it's just something to watch for now. Make sure it's it doesn't turn into something bad. Uh, flop, see that success, thirty six percent. Okay. What uh, what check race sizes have been using? Because this fault to flop check races seems a bit seems a bit on the low side. Uh, have I been using? No, that, that he's been using. Oh, that he's been using. Um, on the paired boards, he uses like thirty three percent. 
Uh, and he check raises a lot on paired boards. So I think he okay. might even be check raising on paired boards, which like, I know there's a lot of check raising, but man, this dude just check raises everything. Uh, and then in other, in other spots, Hmm. Let me think. Yeah, you 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 might want to run run some paired boards with some small check raise sizes, um, because there is a significant amount of check raising on paired boards. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 that, that, that could explain this low fault check raise. Uh, you could also just be running hot as well. So that I'm not gonna something to to watch out for when. Uh, the tide of the cards changes. Um, you see that flop and fold to raise. I have to continue to burn through a pot. Okay. We went soft flop, 60%. Good. We went soft flop, 45%. Yeah, pretty good. Um, overall, we went soft flop is. 54 percent and you're seeing a flop is significantly significantly more than he probably is um this is with his hand so one four eight four i mean both of you will, will be seeing seeing the flop um at the same frequency but you're seeing the flop a lot more in position because of your strategy right so like you, you, yeah. you can see here like you're in position like you're seeing the flop more more frequently um and that's because like you're opening slightly smaller right so you're opening smaller on average with like limps and the small open and so like you're going to be seeing a flop more um and then like you'll be just winning it when when you do um versus him on the other hand is going to be sort of the opposite where he when he's in position is seeing the flop less i mean obviously he's still going to be uh winning slightly more when he does see the flop Uh, you'll be blind. Pull up, see that. Doesn't make sense. Um. Bones of flop C bet thirty three. Yeah. So this is this fault of flop C bet is kind of saying that he's C betting half pot into you all the time. Or well, on average. Does that sound about right? Uh within what context? Just like in general? In like the two bet pots. The two bit pots, uh, it's usually one third. Um, yeah, okay. But I think he uses like similar sizes to me, like on the straight boards, the connected boards, uses a lot of two thirds. Okay. In that case, your fold to flop, see, but it's probably a touch on the high side. Okay. Um, hang on, let me just. this and it'll try to open up i mean i'm not saying it's necessarily bad uh because like you're three winning a bit more too um but it could just be letting him have too cheap of a bluff um and he might not really be exploiting that that fact um so open call like whatever flop check this is quarter pot folding 24 percent um three quarter pot folding 47 percent uh, so this is folding four percent more than alpha for the quarter pot bet. What is alpha? Okay. <laughs> is that a really bad question? 
Yeah. Uh, all right. That's okay. We'll 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 work on this. Oh, I've just never heard that terminology before. Uh it's okay. So in on my website in the training, just go into the bottom here, go to foundations mm -hmm. on the limit hold'em. Oh no. Back to the um, basics. Back to the basics, alpha and omega. Okay. So yeah, probably go through these these three. Um, and then these ones again, you know, like just go through all of these, like back to the basics. This is it going to be like, you know, uh, an elite basketball player just shooting threes, right? Like you need to, you need to go, you need to know the basics off a heart. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, right. I'm probably like, I'm probably aware of the concept, but probably not aware of the exact terminology. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 the opposite of MDF. It's like one minus MDF. Oh, um, yeah. That's everyone knows what MDF is, but alpha is is the right way of talking about it. Alpha, alpha is like the um. It has to do with uh, instead of bluff catching, it has to do with like how frequently your bluff needs to work, right? Yes. Ah, okay. I'm familiar with it. Okay. Yeah. So just 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 go, go through this 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 part this foundation and the whole part um and just watch all these videos. Like it should okay. take. Like two or three hours just do it do, do on the weekend um and just make sure like you sort of get what's going on because it will really help with a lot of like the solve intuition especially the, the first three videos and then like the last one is just mathematical modeling but the first three videos will definitely help a lot with the solve intuition to like understanding like the, the basics like really quite deeply um so yeah i guess small bet 16 17 18 percent through it uh check race frequency uh, 45 percent more than alpha here against a 75 75 uh percent like you just check out the number is um 0 0.75 divided by uh, 1.75 42.8 percent or 43 percent folding four percent more than alpha there um obviously it's going to depend on the board as well yeah i'm aware that you generally defend you generally under defend against alpha on the flop but on turns and rivers, you generally defend around like MDF, or I guess it's if, not if you've MDF. yeah if if you've if you've called a bet and that's true because you should be making the um, bluffs on the previous street closer to a different um, like once 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 you get to the river and his his range is very polar compared to yours then you then you're going to be defending very close to to alpha versus folding more than it because he, he needs to turn essentially some showdown in, into bluffs um when there's still more cards to come uh because his check his check back range is going to have ev um associated with it mm -hmm. um but yeah like in, in general you sort of want to keep things um your reporting frequency close to alpha or if not a tiny bit more and if he's going one third that would suggest that um your forwarding frequency should be closer so alpha against a one third bet is 25 percent, and so here you're holding 33 percent. and like maybe if you add an extra like four or five percent because you're out of position on the flop that still means that your holding frequency should be um a little bit closer to the maybe 29 ish percent level so you're holding a touch more so that would mean wait, that wait, wait, wait. You, you, this, that would mean you, you could probably go back and find out of these 300 ish uh, flop C bets um, and the 99 folds, you could probably find four or five. Um... Wait, let me, get, let me get the numbers right. Yeah, so let's make it so, so 200, 294 is the total number, and we want that to be sort of 29%. So 85, and you fold 99% of the time. So 99 times. So you could probably find an extra. 12 13 14 um folds which you probably could have floated okay um before we move on i would yeah. like to say that my intuition tells me that he's over barreling in single raise pots could we check that yep that that, that is that is possible that is true and then if that's the case then you've already made the right um 
you've already right, made the right exploit. Uh, Twenty five out of sixty is your fold to the turn see that. Yeah, I guess I'm under I'm under calling flops and over calling turns, and I very well might be over calling rivers as well. Because he uses very big sizes on the river, especially in the triple barrel line. And I don't like folding. So he's made a flop bet. His C bet turn is 42.76%. Mm, that doesn't seem very high. This is the single race pots. Yeah. Uh, so in single race pots. This is for him. He raised first in and make a flop bet. Um, after he bets a flop, he's checking back the turn a significant amount of time. So, I mean, this is probably correct, assuming that you assuming that you don't donk the turn and stuff. But otherwise, mm -hmm. I think this is kind of low, to be honest. Yeah, like, he's been the flop a lot. He's been the flop with pretty high frequency and checking back a flop. Um, which means that maybe maybe your intuition is wrong and that you should be sort of doing the opposite. Overcall flop. Overcall flop, and then you end up getting to see that to see. Yeah, over, over, overcall flop, un, un, undercall turn. And because he's betting a little bit low frequency on the turn, you see betting less, you get to see the river for, for, for cheaper. Right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of this is sort of saying that maybe you should float the flop a little bit more and then pick it up from him when he checks back the turn and you just overbet into him. Um, it could also be a variance thing uh, combined with the fact that he is see being a flop at a high frequency by a sort of default. Like if he's if he's, if he's he's dealt a bunch of really shit hands and he has a strategy which see a flop at a high frequency, this will also be the result. Mm-hmm. So if he's yeah, yeah, so so if if, if he, even if he's if he's playing like really well and he's just being dealt shit, this will happen. This will happen to this statistic. It'll cause him to essentially check back the turn a lot, um, because he's bet the flop because you know that's kind of what he does, and then he checks back the turn a lot because he's being dealt crap, which is definitely a possibility because he's been running so good. So mm -hmm. keep keep that in mind. It could be the case that he's checking back the turn a bit much or it could just be running bad mm -hmm. so um either way i'll probably in your position go back through those hands where you um folded so or, 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 or go, go filter filter your own database and look at all the hands that you folded to the flop see that and see if you can find any mistakes there and you should be able to see that there could be you know you, you fold 100 times um, in this sample so far, you should be able to spot ten mistakes. Okay. Where maybe you followed it a bit too, uh, a bit too much. Okay. So yeah, that's yeah. a bit a bit a bit of homework for you between now and tomorrow. Um. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably leave it there. I'll upload this um simulation for you to take a look at. Uh, and then we'll chat again tomorrow after the next session. Cool. Any other questions? I'm ready to no. go. All right. Keep 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 staying focused. Keep 
working on your physical health, mental health, and then use all that in the challenge. See you tomorrow. See you.